Okay, in this video I want to talk about uh, the arc length of a vector function. So suppose we have the vector function r of t where the x, y, and z coordinates are given by the parametric functions f of t, g of t, h of t. Suppose t is in the interval from a to b, and suppose as t varies from a to b, if the curve is transversed exactly once, this is something uh, we'll definitely have to make caref uh, be careful about, um, it says to calculate the length of that curve, we just integrate over that time interval, and it says just take the derivative of f, square it, the derivative of g, square it, the derivative of h, square it, add them together and take the square root. Um, and these two at the bottom are just um, alternate notations. So if you remember the arc length formula for parametric uh, equations in, in two dimensions, it's very analogous. You just tack on the extra z component in this case, um, or k component, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, so let's do hopefully a, a, a simple example. So we want to find the length of this vector function r of t equals 2 sine t, 5t, 2 cosine t, and it's going to be on the interval negative 10 to 10. So, um, you know, the thing that I notice is, well, the x-coordinate has a sine in there, and the z-coordinate has a cosine in there. So as t increases, um, the x-coordinate and the z-coordinate are going to be trapped between negative 2 and positive 2. But, um, you know, certainly they could be you know, those values could be repeated over that interval, and they will be. And to me, that makes me think, you know, possibly the curve is sort of, you know, being transversed more than once. But, of course, if you look at the y-coordinate, um, the y-coordinate is given by the parametric equation 5t. And if we take the derivative of that, we simply get 5. And just thinking about, you know, using derivatives to find where a function's increasing and decreasing. Since the derivative is always positive, that means the y-coordinate is always increasing. So, um, you know, here's a, a obviously not the picture of, of this vector function, but the idea is the y-coordinate is strictly increasing. So whatever is happening to the x-coordinate and the uh, z-coordinate is fine. We know the y-coordinate's strictly increasing, so that does mean the curve is transversed exactly once. Okay, so again, something that you would want to be careful about. Um, I think most problems you'll see in you know a typical calculus class they will be transversed once, but uh, you know on a test or a quiz, if somebody wanted to give you one a little a little more tricky, uh, you'd have to definitely be careful about that. So. Okay, so I think the formula is relatively easy. Again, um, f of t is given by 2 sine t. Um, so that means if we take the derivative of that, well, we'll simply get 2 cosine t. Um, g of t, that's the 5t portion. So if we take the derivative of that, we'll simply get 5. And uh, the parametric equation for the z-coordinate, h of t equals 2 cosine t. If we take the derivative of that, we'll simply get negative 2 sine t. Okay, so this is the stuff now that we're going to have to plug into our formula, but, uh, you know, when we plug it in, we're going to have to square them, so we'll do that, no problem. So it says the length of this curve, it says the length of this curve is going to be given by, we'll have to integrate from negative 10 to 10, again, that was the interval that we were given. It says take uh, f prime, which is 2 cosine t. It says you got to square that, plus uh, g prime, which is 5. You've got to square that, plus h prime, which is negative 2 sine t. you got to square that one, too. Okay, so at this point, um, you know, again, it, it, uh, other than making sure that the curve is transversed once, the only thing that's going to be tricky, I think, in these problems is, hey, now you have a fun uh, integration problem to deal with. Um, you know, anytime I see a square root, one of two things, you know, almost any problem in general, the first thing I always think is, is there any algebraic simplification, or if there's trig present, is there some trig identity that's going to simplify things down? And I think that's going to be the trick in this problem. Um, if that doesn't work, usually next I think u substitution, and also since there's a square root, um, if you've seen trigonometric substitution, which you certainly should have at this point, um, you may have to do a trig substitution in order to, to integrate that function. But I think in this case, again, we can just do a little, a little algebra and make use of some trig identities. 
So we'll get 4 cosine squared t uh, plus 25 plus 4 sine squared t when we square everything. Okay, well, I see a sine squared and a cosine squared, and lo and behold, they've got the same coefficient of a 4. Remember our trig identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So all I'm going to do is, so negative 10 to 10, I could factor the 4 out on the cosine squared portion and the sine squared portion. So that would simply leave me with, well, cosine squared t plus sine squared t plus 25 dt. And again, we know that cosine squared plus sine squared, uh, that's simply equal to 1. So really, underneath the radical, we have 4 times 1 plus 25, which would give you the square root of 29. And, you know, in Calc 3, integrals don't get much better than that. So um, nothing too bad here. So. If we integrate this constant, we'll simply get the square root of 29 times t. We'll have to integrate that, negative 10 to 10. Um, again, nothing, nothing heavy here. So we'll get square root of 29 times 10 minus the square root of 29 times negative 10. OK, so really, that's just simply 10 square root of 29 plus another 10 square root of 29 that to me is going to give us 20 uh, times the square root of 29. Uh, 29 is prime, so we can't clean up the radical at all. So um, unless you wanted to turn it into a decimal, I would say that's where I would stop. So, um, and again, that's it. So you know, I think the formula is relatively easy. The only thing that's going to be tricky, again, making sure the curve is transversed once, and just the actual um, integration of the problem is going to be the tedious part. So um, last but not least, one kind of uh, maybe trivial, uh, uh, clear, you know, maybe it doesn't even need to be pointed out. Obviously, a length has to be a positive number. Likewise, the thing you're integrating over is a square root function. So if somehow at the end um, you end up with a negative number, either you just messed up your signs somewhere or you did something more catastrophically wrong. So um, again, the length has to be positive, which certainly is it, it is in this case. So all right, my friends, I hope this helps. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to post them.